Okay. Hi. Okay. Hi again, everyone. Um, for those who have missed my mini introduction in the beginning, I am Fermaine from the Strategic Collaborative Fund Program of SEI Asia. Thank you for your interest in our um, call for concept notes. And this is um, a great time for you to get to know what we do, um, what the concept, what the regional policy dialogue is all about. And this is also an opportunity for you to ask, um, ask us questions um, about our project. So I would like to start the program today um, by giving you a bit of background um, on SEF through um, our video. Don't worry, it's very short. Um, and, and this will give you an idea on what we have done in the past. SEI Asia, with support from the Swedish government, launched the Strategic Collaborative Fund or SCF program in 2018 to enhance the current 2030 agenda efforts in Asia and the Pacific. Our goal is to create long-term partnerships to enhance policy impact and institutional capacity building in Asia under the framework of regional integration and the Sustainable Development Goals. We also support the research policy dialogue to build more effective regional policies that contribute to the SDGs. SCF provides opportunities for multi-stakeholder engagement platforms to enhance regional collaboration across Asia, inter-regional policy development and institutional capacity with multi-stakeholders. In all the initiatives that we do or support, we make sure that evidence-based human rights and gender equality approaches are at the center. We conduct direct coaching sessions with our partners and we also created online courses on human rights and gender. SCF focuses its outreach in Asia and beyond. We have a partnership with the Asia Europe Foundation where we host sessions under the Environment Forum to share knowledge and build capacity for policymakers, businesses and civil society from Asia and Europe on issues related to sustainable development and climate change. We also support the China ASEAN Environment Cooperation Forum, which is a platform for China and ASEAN to discuss environmental cooperation and policies for sustainable development. In the Asian region, SCF gives yearly grants to organizations to host strategic regional events that highlight key issues that are linked to the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. The goal is to enhance regional collaboration and partnership to lead efforts toward policy development and regional sustainability. Through this program, we want to be able to influence public policy and push for a more sustainable and inclusive development in Asia. Um, that um, so now to um, give us a better background on what SEF is, I would like to give the floor um, to the project manager um, Jeb, um, who will tell us more about um, SEF and our activities. Jeb, you have the floor. Thank you, Shaman, for the video and introduction. Um, now I will have a brief presentation about the program itself and will also uh, provide some question and answer um, that we received earlier so that it kind of recap before we will uh, go into the live Q&A that you may uh, already have question in your mind. Can we start the PowerPoint please? In between, my name is Vanapon Yang Yun Tham. Um, as Chamin already introduced, I work as a program manager and also a part of policy team at SCI Asia. 
um, so with the support from the government of Sweden or SIDA, uh, the SCF Strategic Collaborative Fund uh, was launched in 2018 and in fact this SCF is one of uh, SCI Asia flagship program. The objective is uh, to enhance the 2030 agenda effort in Asia. And please go to the next slide. So um, the long-term objective of the program itself, we have several uh, activity under the program. SCF try to promote the regional collaboration and long-term partnership among uh, diverse stakeholders for policy impact, as well as uh, we also aim to strengthen institutional capacity building of our partners through several activity. For example, uh, we provide uh, access to massive open online courses on gender equality and human rights. And we also uh, offer interactive uh, learning dialogue with our partners. Through the, through the program activities, we also integrate the right approach and gender equality in our uh, policy dialogues um, at our state. So we make sure that the cross-cutting themes focus uh, on the gender, on right approach, and uh, poverty focus are also mainstream in the thematic call this year. Uh, briefly about SCF component, uh, you may hear about our um, 2022 call for concept note. In fact, that is only the activity under uh, component two. And in SCF program itself, uh, we provide financial and technical support to uh, our partner for the inter-regional and regional policy dialogue to address transboundary environmental issues. Uh, we work a lot with national governments, policy makers, uh, at you might already hear from the video that we work with uh, the Chinese government, um, Ministry of Environment and Ecology, ASEAN member state, and also other partners like Asia Europe Foundation. Uh, we also work with private sector, academic, civil society organization, and local communities. About the call itself, if we may go to the next slide. Um, so uh, this is to, to demonstrate that uh, our program SCF, we also uh, align with SCI strategy. Our outcomes are lie in three areas. First thing is about uh, changing attitude and we will try to also influence behavior among uh, stakeholders through the knowledge exchange and networking in our regional event support. And the second one is enhancing capacity. Uh, apart from the financial support, we will also have like cross uh, interaction with our partner. We provide uh, coaching and also like learning opportunity uh, among partner organization. And the last one is on uh, improving decision. This is uh, also through the engagement in our regional uh, event and also the tool that we will also provide uh, during the discussion. Uh, and you know that this year we already launched the thematic course. This year we have uh, five and just to give you a background, we started uh, the regional call for concept note in 2019. Uh, we had six team and then uh, in 2020, we, ha we had seven teams, and this year we launched five first, but later on we will uh, also like launch a broader theme on partnership, so please make sure that you stay tuned and uh, keep posted. So uh, quickly um, about the theme itself, the first one is on the inclusive uh, disaster reduction. Um, the second one is on sustainable agriculture system and value chain. Uh, the third theme is on circular waste management. And the fourth one is on the ecological system thinking. 
and the last theme is on the gender and as you can see that the climate component is also integrated in all the theme that uh, we launched this year uh, this is just to recap about our selection criteria i think uh, you know uh, about this so just to explain the process a bit uh, once you submit application we will uh, assess and evaluate your application according to uh, this selection criteria and then of course uh, after this we will uh, apart from our SCF team who will evaluate uh, your concept note we will also work closely with a uh, specific um, research cluster who who will evaluate and focus more on the thematic um, criteria Yeah, and now um, we uh, I will pass the floor to Shaman. We will go into the session of like frequent uh, art question that we collect uh, from the past few years. And if you have any additional question, so feel free also to put in the chat. Or uh, at the end, we will also open the floor for uh, question and answer again. Thank you so much, Jeb. Okay, let's get started. I think this is the part that you are all waiting for. So let's start with the first question. What is SCF looking for? What are the activities that um, we want to um, give grants to? And what are the innovations that we want to see on, on your proposals? And what are the format of the events? Is it a one-off event? Is it a series of events? And um, what kind of outcomes um, is SEF looking for? So to answer those, I have colleagues with me. I have Jeb, of course, that you have met just a few moments ago, but we also have um, Kuntum Melati and um, Dimas Fauzi who will help us answer those questions. So um, any, any of you three want to take that on? We have four questions. So let's start with the first one. What are the activities um, that SEF is um, asking from its grants. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Shaman. Um, on that question, maybe I will uh, provide like the general answer first. So what we are looking for is um, on the concept note that proposed uh, to organize regional policy dialogue for addressing transboundary environmental issues and uh, support policy development when we talk about uh, regional policy dialogue or event, we refer to a broader theme. Uh, this can be one off or a part of like series in form of conference, seminar, workshop. And of course, uh, this is really up to applicant. Uh, we, we are really much open, like you can propose in any format as well. Uh, but just to address here that uh, we will not provide a grant to mm -hmm. the uh, project project activity implementation, for example, like if it uh, PO research training infrastructure um, activity, something like that. So because our focus of the program is really on regional policy dialogue. And um, as we post in the uh, selection criteria, please also make sure that um, you demonstrate uh, our key cross-cutting theme on um, gender equality, right approach, and poverty focus because uh, these three uh, act like themes need to be linked with the specific thematic call as well. And I think in terms of um, like the combination and how the proposed event should look like. Um, we also uh, include that um, the proposed event uh, should involve with like relevant stakeholders. So we want to make sure that uh, we have diverse like sector from government, private sector, civil society and uh, academic institutions. And it depends on the topic if it concerns like uh, community and mar marginalized people. So please make sure that uh, you propose the approach and channel that can engage and involve with them as well.
Okay. Um, Dima, Terpuntum, do you want to add anything or should we move on to the next question? We can move on. Okay. Uh, I have nothing to add. Mm -hmm, okay. Um, uh, sorry, yes, Shaker. Maybe yes. I should address this as well. As we know that uh, we all got the impact from the pandemic. So in 2019, when we post the call, uh, in fact, we aim for like in-person regional policy dialogue. But with the current situation, we understand that uh, we have the travel limitation. So we, we are also open for like online and hybrid approach. Um, yeah, just as you see, it appropriate. And in terms of uh, the innovative and like how to make it more creative, not business as usual, just about the conference, this is uh, also up to applicants. Um, it depends, you can uh, also like link it with tools that you may have or uh, try to make the linkage with your organization portfolio operation. Uh, for example, in the past, we also uh, grant an application that proposed to have like uh, the research with young people, youth, and you know, uh, it it uh, it was proposed at the pre-activity before the regional event to make sure that uh, the finding and outcome will be also like presented uh, and leveraged and advocate to the relevant policy makers? Probably I, I, I add a bit on the innovation part of that, what Jeff has already mentioned earlier as well. So I, I think because of one of the focus of uh, SCF2 is on the, how we can leverage the voice from the marginalized and vulnerable groups. So I think these innovations are, so the innovation uh, can also reflect on how you can you know, bring these voices up to the policy dialogue. And then it can be done through many things. Um, and then you can just uh, ensure that how, uh, that, that there is a path pathway for uh, the voices from the marginalized and vulnerable groups uh, to be brought up at the policy level. Uh, it can be like the last uh, year's implementation, there was, uh, they use uh, social media as a one way to leverage their, um, <clears throat> the vulnerable groups um, voices and also some of the grantees also did um, community engagement directly with the marginalized groups so they can understand more um, about their concerns directly. So that's also uh, one of uh, some of the examples of what we, uh, what the past grantees have done in terms of uh, innovations in the proposal. Thank you so much, um, Dimas and Jeb. Okay, maybe we can, um, if you have questions on this slide, please write it down on the chat box and we'll get to that um, in a little bit. But for now, we'll move on to the next question. Next slide, please. Um, so a lot of you may be wondering what the eligibility criteria. We have briefly mentioned it in the introductions a while ago. Um, next slide. There, who are eligible to apply for the grants? Who are not eligible to apply? Um, what's the scope geographically? And what kind of organizations in Asia can apply? Um, can you submit more than one um, proposal? And does it have to be in a consortium? Um, and also with the organizations who are not necessarily familiar or working in the area of human rights and gender equality, will they even be considered? So these are um, quite a handful. So I'm going to um, hand it over to my team to answer. Um, thanks, Shaman, for the um, eligibility. Uh, we, for our call for concept note, we open uh, to our type of organization, either like if you are NGO, private sector, academia, government agency, or civil uh, society organizations. The only condition uh, that not eligible to apply is if you are the current um, CEDA regional program grantee or partner, uh, because we would like to make sure that um, we will not provide like uh, duplicate uh, financial support in that case. And when we talk about uh, the geographical scope, uh, 
uh, I think we put it clearly in our selection criteria as well that uh, the scope should be focused on Asia region, um, especially in South and Southeast Asia, not uh, the country level focus. And when when I talk about uh, the legion scope is not only about the geographic scope that like we ask you to uh, propose at least three countries um, but it also refer to the content and beneficially uh, themselves because we want to make sure that the issue that uh, your organization would like to address um, is kind of transboundary issue not specific uh, to like one area or one country but uh, make sure it also really went um yeah uh on the question uh, that you ask about um if the organization uh, are based outside asia do they like are they eligible to apply um in this case we we are also open uh, to organization uh, that are not like in Asia, but uh, we would like to make sure that you also provide the evidence of the regional level outreach and focus. And perhaps, like if you are outside of Asia, but uh, your portfolio or operation, uh, your work is in Asia. I think uh, in that case, it's totally fine. And then. Um, whether the organization can submit more than one proposal um yeah we we are also uh, happy to review more than one proposal but please make sure that when you uh, submit the proposal uh you submit only one concept note per theme and we have five themes so in case your organization work uh, in cross-cutting area or more than one theme so you are also free to submit more than one proposal Question on human rights and gender equality. Um, if your organizations are not very proficient in these areas, uh, then uh, it's totally fine. Uh, as long as you can um, provide information on, on how you plan to integrate humans and human rights and uh, gender uh, equality into your uh, proposal. And then we do have specific um, section in the concept note template itself where you can try to explain um, how you plan to integrate those things. And we also have uh, provided um, all of the grantees and also the applicants with uh, the guidance note on gender and human rights mainstreaming, which you should refer to uh, when designing the project proposal. And I think it's going to be really useful. And once you are selected uh, as a grantee of SF2, we will also provide um, coaching and technical assistance on human rights and gender equality um, so it's uh, the answer. Short answer is totally yes. If your no organizations are not proficient in these areas, then you should definitely still uh, try to apply, and then just make sure that you integrate the whole uh, human rights and gender equality into the event design, and we can refine it and we can fine tune uh, once uh, your if your proposal is selected, uh, and we'll make sure that it's going to be uh, mainstream in the event um, when it's implemented later on. Thank you whether, so much. Uh, yes, going on. And whether the proposal needs to be submitted and the proportion, we encourage uh, all the applicants to have this consortium uh, when you apply to the ICF grant because we're, as Jeff already mentioned, that we are promoting regional collaboration and also leveraging the network. So we do feel that consortium will help the grantee to have, uh, you know, like, to have a better knowledge and as well as uh, our aim on, uh, you know, being inclusive and then targeting vulnerable and marginalized communities. So we would encourage if you could also partner with local organization as part of the consortium mention. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have one question here from Moni Nong. In case of an organization receiving a subgrant from SEDA, are they eligible to apply? Um, so maybe uh, I need to first check um, what is the grant 
from FIDA because if it under the regional program, uh, that will be the criteria that uh, we will not allow the organization to apply. But if it like uh, a grant from FIDA headquarter or some other program, uh, in that case, you are also eligible. Perhaps you can also uh, provide me like the name of the project that you received the grant from FIDA and uh, the name of your organization. I can double check and get back to you on that. Okay, thank you so much. Um, let's move on to the next question. Next slide, please. When to expect the results of the, the selection? Next slide. Okay, so you can see here the program timeline. Um, Jeb or Dima or Kuntum, you want to explain? Dimat, go ahead. Sure. That's better answer. <laughs> you have enough other questions. Right. So yeah. Um. So we have uh, for these uh, year's calls, we do have uh two deadlines. Um. So it's this one is the the old deadline for the inclusive disaster research action. So the deadline for this specific thematic call MTRR has been extended until the twenty fifth of February. Uh, so if your organization has already submitted a proposal to this thing before or like before this deadline, the 17th, then uh, we are you are welcome to rewind and resubmit your proposal. And then we will use the latest version of your <clears throat> concept note or proposal um, to assess. Um, so the new deadline is the 25th for the inclusive disaster uh, risk reduction. And uh, the other calls, the other four calls will have a deadline on the 10th of March. Um, and then uh, yeah, please submit your proposal by this deadline. And all of the deadlines are actually at 5 p.m. Bangkok time, GMT plus seven. Um, so yeah, please make sure that you submit your proposal in time. Um, and we will try to finalize the selection process by the end of April. And for the specific theme on disaster risk reduction, it's going to be sooner than that. Um, probably around a week or two uh, quicker than the other calls, um, given the earlier deadline they have. Uh, and the projects or the events uh, should be implemented between May and September 2022. And then in the initial stage, we usually will uh, re rewind and then provide feedback on the concept note and on how to better you know, integrate the general human rights mainstreaming and then other issues that we uh, consider that we see from the concept note. And then after that, um, we will focus on the implementation of the event itself um, by the end of September uh, at the latest. Um, so please um, make sure that uh, when you design your proposal uh, or your event should uh, follow this kind of schedule. Uh, and for the inclusive disaster risk reduction, it has a different uh, kind of uh, like it has a specific outcome or a specific policy framework that we would like to uh, tap on uh, that is on the Asia Pacific Disaster Risk Summit or something. So you should also uh, look into the specific um, thematic call criteria. But generally, the event should be implemented uh, by the end of September uh, 2022. And then the final three months or so uh, at the end of the year. It will be used for uh, the reporting and also uh, the monitoring evaluation and learning uh, kind of um, assessment. Um, so yeah, this is roughly uh, how we are going to uh, implement the SEF2 program this year. And within May and until September during the implementation period, we will be in touch uh, very, um, uh, every, every now and then to uh, make sure that the event is on the right track and also it incorporated it incorporates every um, aspect that we require since the beginning including on the measuring of human rights and gender issues uh, that's uh, roughly how it is uh, if there's any additional points from chair kuntum pui charming feel free to add Okay. Um, any other questions from, let me check the chat box. Okay. Kuntum is answering the question there. So yeah, so these, this is the timeline. I hope you are all receiving um, 
our updates from um, our newsletter or checking um, the SEI um, social media accounts or also looking at the website um, and seeing um, these kinds of information. So um, let's move on to the next one. Okay, we don't have any more. So I think this is your chance to ask us your questions if we haven't, um, if we have not touched on that. Um, the floor is open, please raise your hand uh, if you want to ask questions and I will call on to you. Oh, there's a question here. Can you please share the expectations with regards to Mel? Um, I think maybe Dimas, do you have, do you want to answer this? Oh, the monitoring and evaluation, right? <clears throat> so, the monitoring and evaluation, um, we do have um, some tools that we kind of require uh, to implement uh, during the event. Um, but then, uh, when it comes to um, proposal stage, it's uh, relatively more flexible. Um, it really depends on how you design your event. For instance, if um, you have a uh, kind of in-person community consultation, then it may be a little bit challenging to do um, like pre and post event survey with the communities uh, because of um, probably the different level of literacy or, 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 or you know, other uh, prevailing, uh, like other issues that may uh, prevent the effective or efficient emotional evaluation. So, um, and the standard way of uh, monitoring and evaluation for SEI, for SEF2 pro projects would be uh, to have the pre and post event surveys. Um, um, that's like pretty much like the general standard. Um, and whenever possible, you should uh, incorporate that. Um, and, and if it's uh, like, for instance, if the event, the specific event is um, kind of like a little bit difficult to use this pre and post event survey, then you can suggest uh, how you will uh, kind of uh, monitor or assess the, the, uh, this event particularly, uh, whether it's like through attendance or through photos or through uh, something else or interviews. And another thing that we do also for the monitoring and evaluation will be uh, using the most significant changes. So it's another survey, but it's done after the event to trace um, how um, the or like how the participants actually take up the learning knowledge from the SAF's uh, event. Um, and that's for the grantee side, but then from the um, SAF side, we will have um, a tracer study as well to all of the participants uh, attending the SAF to funded events uh, from all the organizations or all the grantees. Um, but if you have any other ways of um, doing the monitoring and evaluation uh, in terms of tools and all, uh, feel free to suggest that. Um, but again, the general um, requirement uh, would be pre and post event survey. And if it, whenever it's possible, you should do that. Um, and if it's not possible, then you should suggest like how to do that. Because it's, we, yeah, so because we cannot really um, say like, oh, this monitoring and evaluation tool must be implemented uh, for every single event, because it may be the case that in one of the events, it's not very possible to do uh, some of the monitoring and evaluation tools, and we do understand that. So yeah, um, we are quite flexible at, the, at this point on, on the monitoring and evaluation for the concept note stage, but we will definitely discuss about it further when uh, your proposal is selected. Okay, thank you so much, Dimas. There's another question here. Um, the call is expecting to have participation of diverse groups such as for inclusive DRR, um, indigenous peoples, ethnic minorities, non-normative gender and sexual identities, children and youth, and persons with disabilities. It is difficult to have all at one stage. So can we focus on just one or two of, of these? Maybe Kuntum, you can answer that. Yeah, uh, thank you for this question. I think this is a very valid point because at, at times it might sound quite overwhelming. But also, as Dimas mentioned, uh, so it, we, also, we have gender and human rights, 
as like one of the strongest component on our application. So uh, we do want to see how your event will address issues and how we'll be inclusive and touch upon the problems that are facing by uh, these you know, ethnic minorities and indigenous people are marginalized. You don't have to address all of them, uh, but you could choose like one or two, uh, depends on your event focus. But we also want to see some kind of intersectionalities in it. So I think when you, for example, when you're focused on indigenous communities, you could also focus on youth, indigenous communities, you know, on uh, on women leaders, on indigenous communities. So it doesn't necessarily have to be like each of different group, and you could always explore the intersectionalities approach. And in addition to that, as Dimas mentioned earlier, we do have a, a, a MOOC, Massive Open Online course. We also have a coaching clinic. So we will help you to integrate, uh, how to integrate all of this better in your event uh, and also in your, uh, in your uh, monitoring and evaluation, as it mentioned. I just want to add a little bit. Uh, so what we've seen uh, a lot is as you've seen the timeline that we have proposed and please, please do you know, um, learn this timeline and kind of like see it. And then when you plan for your event, uh, make sure that your event match to the timeline that we have earlier. I think what we've seen a lot is uh, a lot of grantees has you know, very interesting uh, various events. However, because they are sometimes too ambitious or like, you know, not planned uh, ahead. And then most of the events could not really get the impact as we wanted to see. So uh, I think the timeline that we've shown you is very important. So when you write your proposal and then listed your uh, potential events or agenda, also make sure like, when are you planning to have it? And then think about the monitoring and evaluation phase that you need and also the reporting stage. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kuntum. Um, Okay, another question here. Um, is it possible for um, SEI or SEF to share a sample proposal, maybe one that got selected previously or another sample to further clarify and guide um, the drafting of this? Jeb, do you wanna answer that? Yeah, um, like, in fact, we never shared a um, successful application in the past because uh, one thing is also we don't want uh, like other potential organizations to kind of uh, have the idea just for uh, this scope because it's very really open. And in fact, every year we also change the, the theme and topic. So it may not uh, like highly relevant in your case. And uh, we would like to more like get the idea from uh, applicants instead of, uh, you know, sharing um, the successful concept note in the past. Um, yeah, so, so we don't really uh, share that. In but addition? Uh, I know that actually if you click the SEF2 website, as we already shared the link here, you can click on the past events and there's uh, more information on what our grantee from the previous year looks like. So we couldn't share the proposal because I think it's also part of the confidentiality. Um, but also like what Jeff has mentioned, most of the event actually reflect what your organization good at. You know, some of the proposal focusing on uh, youth, some of the proposal focusing on intergovernmental agencies, uh, some of it more on training and grassroots. So it really reflects what your uh, organization and that's why if you have a consortium that will actually enrich your proposals. And uh, yeah, just if, if you look at our website, just, you know, uh, read and then just look at the past events, some of the highlights. And uh, we also have booklet and that might be helpful to give you a bit of ideas. In addition to that, we do have other concept note um, template, and then within the template, there there are uh, the specific um, kind of question. There is specific guidance on um, what we are expecting from each of this section in the concept note. So, if you follow that, I think you'll you'll be fine. 
um, we try to answer as much as possible to the guiding questions in the concept note and then try to follow the guidance over there. If you have any confusion related to the concept note, please feel free to reach out, uh, to, reach out to us uh, and we will be happy to clarify the issues for you as well. Okay, thank you so much. Um, just being conscious of the time, we're nearing the end. Um, does anyone from the SEF team have any um, last words before we wrap up? Or uh, we're good? Yeah, yes, Kundu. So I think uh, as Estimas also mentioned, if you want to apply for a certain team, make sure that you learned what's the concept note, what we uh, outlined there. I think it's, it's pretty clear. So for example, for DRR, one of the objectives that they want to see is how you integrate your event with the Asian uh, disaster risk reduction event that will be upcoming uh, in Indonesia. So yeah, make sure that you, you read like very thoroughly what we want to see as part of the outcomes and who is our target uh, of the event and what are the policy pathways. So I think if you can follow this, then uh, you know it, it, you have a, a big chance to be at least shortlisted. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Kuntum. Thank you to everyone who joined us today. Um, if you have further questions um, after this, um, little session, we encourage you to email us at sef at sei.org um, or follow us on all of our social media channels um, and we will respond to you in all of those, in whatever channel you chose to um, reach out to us. So thank you again, everyone, for joining and we look forward to receiving um, your proposals very soon. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Good luck, everyone. Thank you.